Hey, I'm here in a rowboat on Cowichan Lake on Vancouver Island. And I'm headed across the lake from where I'm staying here to a place about four kilometers down the lake. Right here, the lake's about a kilometer across. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to minimize the time it takes me to get to my destination. Now I ask that because there's a lot of different things I could do. I can go straight across the lake, park my boat, walk down the lake, or I can go all the way straight to my destination. Or I can head anywhere in between there and they're all gonna take different times. Now the, the, the thing to know is that it takes me longer, I'm slower at rowing the boat than I am at walking. I can row the boat only about three kilometers an hour, but I can walk, say, five kilometers an hour. So even though going straight to my destination is the shortest distance, I'm going slow because I'm in the boat the whole time. Whereas if I go straight across the lake, I, I cut down on how much I'm in the boat, but then I gotta walk a long distance down the shore. Now somewhere in between there, there's an optimum point. So if I go at a bit of an angle here, somewhere, aim for somewhere there, and then walk the rest of the way, that's gonna be the minimum time. The way I'm gonna figure that out is we're gonna use calculus right now, using the numbers that I've told you here. So let's do that right now. All right, so let's look at the situation here. We have the shoreline. We have me in the boat right here. And we have my destination down the shore here. The distance straight to the shore is one kilometer. And the distance down the shore that my destination is is four kilometers. Now, I can do a variety of things here. I can go straight to the shore. I can go straight to my destination. I can go anywhere in between. What I want to do again is minimize the time it takes if I go straight to the shore and along the shore, it's slow. I'm doing a lot of walking. If I go straight to the destination, I row slower than I walk, so it's going to take time. Somewhere in between here is an optimum place to land that's going to minimize what I have to do, the combination of the rowing and the walking. So how I'm going to approach this is I'm going to use some variables here. I'm going to say that since what I'm looking for is the distance down the shore between directly to the shore and where I'm gonna land the boat I'm gonna call that X and then my leftover distance that I have to walk here is 4 minus X and I'm gonna use that and set up something for time I'm gonna write a function for time I'm gonna use capital T for the total time it takes now how I'm gonna figure out the total time is in two legs of the journey here there's the the rowing part and then there's the, the walking part over here. So for the rowing part, I'm going to call that uh, time one. So my function here is going to be time one for the rowing part plus time two. To find out what each of those things are, what my time one is, I don't know. But I can figure it out if I know my distance and my speed that I go during that distance. My distance I can write in terms of x because this thing's a right triangle here. I know that this is 1, I have x, so then this thing's going to be square root of x squared plus 1 squared, or just x squared, square root of x squared plus 1, using the Pythagorean relationship. So my distance there is square root of x squared plus 1, and my speed there, which, uh, which I know from before, is 3 kilometers per hour. So that's for that first leg. For the walking part that I have in blue there, we're going to call that time number two. We don't know what that is, but we do know that distance number two is four minus x, and we know that I can walk at five kilometers an hour. So I can use this information to write my function for total time here. So my total time is going to be time number one is distance one over speed one, right? Because time is distance divided by speed or velocity plus distance two over velocity two. Or in other words here, if I put my expressions in for each of the things that I have, square root of x squared plus one over three plus four minus x over five. There's my time function that I'm going to minimize. It's time as a function of x, which is the distance down the shore that I have to land the boat. All right. Now, how we're going to find that minimum value for that is 
algebraically using the derivative. Whatever this function looks like, I don't know what that function looks like graphically, but whatever it is, there's going to be some kind of a minimum point, and we're going to find that by looking at where the derivative is zero. Because this function is defined for all values of x. It's never undefined, so the only way you can have a minimum is if that derivative is zero. And we're going to find that right now. So I'm going to slightly rewrite this function before I find the derivative, just to make it a little bit easier to see what's happening. Instead of square root of x squared plus 1 over 3, I'm going to call it 1 third square root of x squared plus 1. And instead of this expression here, instead of 4 minus x over 5, I'm going to call it 4 fifths minus 1 fifth x. Alright, because that's equivalent. The reason being then, when I write the derivative here, the derivative of this first part, 1 third times that square root function, is going to be 1 third times 1 over 2 square root of that function, because that's the square root of a function, but we need to include times the derivative of the inside, times 2x, using our chain rule. The derivative of the second term here is a constant. I'm going to put plus 0 because that's what the derivative of a constant is. And the derivative of that last term there, minus 1 fifth x, is just minus 1 fifth. So simplifying that a little bit before we do anything with it, we can simplify the first term a little bit because we have those 2's that cancel nicely. And we have x over 3 square root x squared plus 1. We don't need the 0 there. And we can just put our minus 1 fifth there. That's our derivative. Now, we want to look for where that derivative is 0. So we're going to use it and solve this equation here. Now, to solve that equation algebraically, we're going to move that 1 fifth over to this side. And then we're going to clear out those fractions. If we multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator, 15 root x squared plus 1, we're going to end up with 3 times the root x squared plus 1, and on this side, 5x. And we have our equation, now we need to solve that. To solve that, we need to look at getting rid of that square root, clearing out the square root, and then starting to isolate x. So if we square both sides, we are going to have 9. We're not going to have the square root anymore. We're just going to have x squared plus 1. We're going to have 25x squared. And then we start to isolate this. Let's distribute that 9. Let's move those x terms together on the same side. We're going to have 16x squared. If we divide both sides by 16, we're going to have x squared is 9 sixteenths. And if we isolate that x by taking the square root of both sides, we're going to have plus or minus 3 quarters. Now, before we look back at what that means in the situation, we have to reject one of these answers. We have to reject the negative one, because that is an extraneous root that occurred when we squared both sides. Without what's in red there, negative 3 quarters is not a solution to that equation. So we're going to reject the negative one, and we're just going to keep x equals 3 quarters, or 0.75. Now, looking back in our situation, if we go back up here, remember that x was the distance down the shore that we were going to go. All right, so we can minimize that time if we land 0.75 or 3 quarters of a kilometer down the shore and then walk the rest of the way. All right? That's the solution. That's the optimum solution. We're going to look at this on a on a graph now just to verify that that, that value makes some sense. We could substitute in some values here to just check. We could put in 0.75 here. That would tell us the total time it would take. We could substitute a few values close to 0.75 on either side just to verify, but it's a lot quicker to do this with a graph. All right, So we'll uh, get our graphing calculator out here. Now we're going to enter this function in. See how fast I can enter it in here. We'll go in super fast mode here. 
All right, there's our function. It's important to remember that you're graphing the original function and looking for that minimum point. You're not graphing the derivative. So using the calculator, we're not actually going to use any calculus. Once we've set up that function, we're just going to look for the minimum point on there to check our work. I'm going to set up the window that makes some sense here. Now, that x is distance, so it's not going to make much sense to go more than about 4, because 4 is the farthest down the shore you can do. Just because of the nature of this calculator, I'm going to go 4.7, so it works out for pixels on the screen. And then these values here are not going to be a whole bunch because these are this is time in hours. And uh, you'd have to play around with a little bit here. Uh, I'm not going to go into the negatives. And I don't think it's going to take, you know, 2 is probably going to be even slightly too much. But we'll go with that on here. And we'll look at what our graph looks like. So there's the part of that function that makes some sense in this situation. Now you notice there it goes slightly down here and then back up again. So right in there is where that minimum point is. That looks like about right here, but we're going to just double check just by finding the minimum on here. Now, on the sophistication of this calculator, you can't trust it past about four or five decimal places. But if you look at that, 0.74999873, that is the value that we found, right? 0.75. And then this is telling us that the time, the, the y value here, right, the t value in our function, is just over an hour that it's going to take, all right? So that confirms graphically what we did algebraically. And we found that value that gives us the least amount of time. All right. Now I realize that in reality, you're not going to go through all this just to save yourself a few minutes because what did we spend here <laughs> figuring this out? That's a little more time than you're going to spend by landing somewhere else along the shore here, right? But just conceptually, it's important to understand that you can use calculus to find that minimum value. All right, and just even from the situation that the, the time's going to vary depending on where you end up on the shore there. All right, that's it. Hope you learned something.